Well, thank you, Mary, and thank you all the organizers at um, Institute of Medicine for this wonderful privilege to be able to um, share our lessons, but also um, learn a lot as well. Uh, as Mary mentioned, uh, the Center for Civic Partnerships uh, is part of the Public Health Institute. Although our offices are in Sacramento, we've had 25 years of working with over 100 cities and communities, mostly in California, uh, but somewhat uh, throughout the United States. Uh, and uh, my last slide will uh, culminate our, um, our work uh, with a celebration that we had uh, last April. So these are the four points that I'm going to make. Um, the first is that leadership and community participation need to be diverse, broad, and deep. Diverse in every way, including young people and even older adults. We tend to focus more on the working population, and we wonder why sometimes we can't get the energy and the enthusiasm and the wisdom uh, that we need to get from the full spectrum across the lifespan. Diverse in terms of um, race and ethnicity, culture, gender, and orientation. And we need various functions. We need people who want to plan, who want to implement, and who want to be the spokespersons. We need to cross-fertilize across disciplines and sectors, as Michelle was talking about, cultivating stakeholders from all walks of life, be they planners, engineers, civic organizations, faith-based groups. These are the model coalitions that we see and support in our work. We need to establish and maintain strong political support without being tied to one administration, political party. We need to go beyond that, and yet we know that policymaking is key and critical to the work. We need to form alliances with respected associations and organizations who have their ear of the key, who have the ear of the key influentials. So for example, for the last five or ten years, we've had good collaboration among public health, planning, and good government associations. Some of those are evidenced in things like the National Leadership Academy for the Public's Health, Convergence, communities, um, Community Transformation Grants, etc. We need to link up with things like the Sustainable Communities Program that's funded by Housing and Urban Development, Department of Transportation, and the Environmental Protection Agency. As was mentioned earlier, we need to talk to folks that are involved in climate change, environmental justice, farm to fork movements, and the latest from the Rockefeller Foundation, the Resilient Cities Movement. If we were just starting, one of the things that I think we've learned very well is that geopolitical context and history matter. So if we're trying to influence policymakers, we need to be most concerned with their most concerned, which is their sphere of control. Data which crosses or blurs jurisdictional boundaries will not be readily embraced. There's too much else on their plate. Make the information accessible and ready to use. Learn how local government and local organization, the fabric of the community, is organized and appreciate the current context. There is almost always baggage between sectors, between organizations, public and private, and that needs to be understood and dealt with. Don't just go ahead with your agenda and hope that it will be embraced by others. Homegrown and locally driven, and I think this is where the most potent strategy comes in. Networks are organic and inherently self-serving, and that's a good thing. Connect them versus direct them. Nationally orchestrated movements have in general not been as successful as the ones that come up from the bottom but get the juice and the support from the national uh, level. <coughs> Build on what works. Resist the temptation to brand it as your own. Locals really resent <laughs> that. Professionals who are armed with data might name what they see as challenges, but they need to be open to various alternative scenarios and solutions. What our speaker this morning talked about in New Zealand, where the issue that 
the folks came in with was very different. It was about, you know, oh, let's look at obesity. And the youth said, well, let's look at youth suicide. You need to be able to go with where the community's heart and energy and interests are. We've certainly learned timing and patience. One city that we worked with for, I'd say, about 20 years, probably one of the first 12 or 13 or so cities, contacted me recently. This is without any resources, without any dollars. They said, we really want to go from just initiative to initiative that has a healthy city kind of you know, emphasis and framework. We want to organize how we work as a city to be a healthy city. Who can I talk to and reach out to? What are the frameworks? How do I start grappling with reorganizing what we do to make for a healthier city? And that's the kind of time frame. That's the kind of longevity that these types of things, again, built on relationships and credibility and how long they take. The fourth is that the regional or whatever fishbowl it is that you want to create provides incentive. And so the theory and the um, idea of diffusion of innovation is very important. Find the 10% that will embrace the work, embrace the initiative. Help them to advocate among their peers where the credibility will be. Find those creative places and showcase them. Uh, some of the work that has been so incredibly important has been right in this region of the state and region of the country. Los Angeles County Health Department, San Diego County Health Department, both um, awardees in communities putting prevention to work, as well as the community transformation grants, have done incredible outreach across and enabling and helping Los Angeles in particular, looking at the 88 cities that they work with and say uh, that are in their um, jurisdictional boundary and saying, you know, if we only work with the ones that can <clears throat> compete and complete an RFA, we won't get to where we need to go. Let's do outreach and help the ones that would never be successful in doing uh, an application. And then find, as Mal Malcolm Gladwell has said, the connector. Find the person who can be in a position of influence. We know of one smart growth developer in Southern California who's had a phenomenal impact with superintendents of schools, champions of industry, um, universities, academic centers, and so forth. Sometimes one individual can be like your Johnny Appleseed, if you will, that can really get some things going. So um, I think that the role that a national organization like this can do is to provide the glue for what is already going on in very diverse ways, calling itself lots of different things, but all aiming in the same direction. In um, 1993, it seems impossible, it was 20 years ago, there was an international Healthy Cities and Communities Conference that we sponsored, and um, there were 1,600 people from around the globe that came to that. And people have now said to me years later that that experience changed the way they looked at their life's work in public health. Maybe it's time to think about something like that again. This was the graphic from our 25 years of Healthy Cities and Communities. It's on our website. I realize it's not going to be super legible in this auditorium or perhaps on the webcast. But um, wanted to also say that um, point out, uh, coming soon, early 2014, the National Civic Review will be dedicating two issues. First one will be out right after the first of the year about the healthy communities movement in uh, the United States, although some North American um, authors were invited as well. We're very happy to have our executive editor, Tyler Norris, with us today as well. So um, I wish all of the work that has been talked about and will be talked about the best. We have still lots to do and lots to build on. So thank you. Thank you so much, Joan, and we'll look forward to reading that review when it comes out. Um, our next speaker is Ned Kalange, who is President and Chief Executive Officer of the Colorado Trust. Ned is a member of the Roundtable on Promotion of Health Equity and Elimination of Health Disparities. <clears throat> 